Hello everyone, welcome to Matrix YouTube channel. Today we are here to discuss the solutions of Matrix Olympiad paper which was held on 29th of October in first shift. So we will start from class 7th and our subject is physics. Let us start our discussion. So our question number first is, a boy travels distance of 500 meter in 10 minutes, speed of boy in kilometer per hour. So we have to convert the speed. First of all, we will find a speed and then uh, we have to convert it into kilometer per hour. So we know that speed is given by distance upon time. So distance is 500 and time is 10 minutes. I am converting this 10 minutes into second. So I have to multiply this by 60. Now the answer will be in the form of meter per second, but we have to converting we have to convert it into kilometer per hour. So to convert meter per second into kilometer per hour, we have to multiply it by a factor which is 18 upon 5. Okay. Now solving this, uh, we will get speed is equals to 5 multiplied by 18 divided by 5 multiplied by 6. So this 5 is cancelled by this 5 and from here, Easily we can say that our correct answer is option B. Next question, question number two. The ratio of units of velocity and acceleration gives the unit of physical quantity. So we know that uh, the unit of velocity is meter per second and the unit of acceleration is meter per second square. So ratio will be given by in this manner. So from here we can see uh, meter is cancelled by meter then again this power is cancelled by this which is equal to second so this ratio will be equal to the unit of time so correct answer is option a next question question number three okay if we touch a piece of steel and a wood on a summer day we feel that steel is much hotter than wood because we know that in the steel is steel is a good conductor of heat so the heat transfer rate is more in steel compared to wood so directly we can say the option c is our correct answer okay next question question number 4 in question number 4 there are four graphs and a condition is given here so let us check which among the following is correct displacement time graph for a freely falling body under the influence of gravity okay and neglect uh, friction so as we know that whenever a body is doing free fall motion, that means it is uh, falling under the uh, effect of gravitational acceleration. That means body is falling with a acceleration which is equals to 9.8 meter per second square. So let us check which graph is correct. In option A, the displacement uh, and time that is a proportionality graph. That means uh, the object is uh, moving fixed displacement in fixed time interval that means in this case acceleration is zero so this is wrong graph then here we can say the displacement is constant that means body is at rest this is also wrong in this case displacement is decreasing with time this is also wrong here we can say as the time increases value of displacement is increasing that means in this case we can say body is doing an accelerating motion so correct answer will be option d next question Question number five, which of the following statements are true or false? Let us start from first statement. Black substances absorb and lose heat radiations faster. This is a true statement. Next, to transfer or to transmit heat from one object to another by conduction method, the two objects must be in contact. That is a true also. Next, the area under velocity time curve gives the acceleration of motion. Let us check. Let us draw the curve between velocity and time. And let's say at this instant, the time is T1 and velocity is V1. If you have to find value of area covered in this graph, so I will multiply it V1 into T1. And we know that velocity into time is equals to displacement it is not equal to acceleration so the statement third is false statement so correct code is true true and false let us check option b is true true and false so option b is our correct answer next question question number six there are two columns and we have to match the 
रिलेटिव थिंग्स ओके मोशन ऑफ ए सिंपल पेंडुलम सो मोशन ऑफ ए सिंपल पेंडुलम इज ए ऑक्सीटरी मोशन दैट मीन्स बॉडी मूव टू एंड फ्रो अबाउट ए मीन पोजिशन सो फॉर पी आई कैन राइट इट वन मोशन ऑफ अर्थ अराउंड सन यू नो दैट वेन ऑफ अर्थ रिवॉल्व अराउंड सन इट इज ए रेवोल्यूशनरी मोशन सो फॉर क्यू आई विल राइट इट थ्री मोशन ऑफ अर्थ ऑन इट्स एक्सिस इट इज अ रोटेटरी मोशन सो फॉर दिस आई विल राइट टू सो करेक्ट कोड इज वन थ्री टू वन थ्री टू दैट मीन्स ऑप्शन ए इज अवर करेक्ट आंसर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवन इन क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवन इट इज सेट द सन रेज आर फॉलिंग on two identical ice block as shown in the figure rahul a student of 6th grade is observing the melting process of ice according to the rahul which of the following is true about the melting of ice we can see in uh, case first the rays are falling vertically while uh, in case second uh, the rays are falling at some angle we know that whenever rays falls normally to surface then the absorbing rate of heat will be more so we can see the cube a will melt first so we can see which is our correct uh, option ice block a start melting first so option a is our correct answer okay so we have discussed all the questions of subject physics uh, for more information regarding matrix olympiad like result and award ceremony etc please press the bell icon and subscribe this youtube channel thank you very much hello everyone Now we will discuss the chemistry portion of class seventh. The question is, which of the following country is the leading producer of silk? Option A is USA. Option B is China. Option C is Pakistan, and option D is India. Option B is the right option for this question. The China is the country which is. leading producer of silk and in the second position india is there so because why the china is the leading producer of silk because the climate of the china is favorable for growing the mulberry trees so the option b is the right option for this question now let's see the next question the next question is anju wanted to buy a gift made up of animal fiber obtained without killing the animal which of the following would be the right gift for her to buy options are option a is woolen shawl option b is silk scarf option c is animal fur cap and option d is leather jacket so for silk scarf animal fur cap and leather jacket without killing the animal we cannot obtain these all substances so the option c b and d are the wrong options now let's see the first option a is the right option for this question because we obtain the wool from the sheep okay without killing the sheep we can uh, easily obtain the wool so the option a is the right option for this question now let's see the question the question is which plant fiber is commonly used for making sacks and ropes option a is silk option b is jute option c is wool and option d is nylon so the option b is the right option for this question because jute is very strong and durable fiber so the jute is commonly used for making these type of substances now let's see the next question the next question is which of the following statement is or are true or false let's see the statements the first statement is carbonic acid is a strong acid no carbonic acid is a weak acid so the first is false statement now let's see the second second is neutralization is a process in which an acid react with a base to produce salt and water this is completely a right statement because we know that when we uh, combine or when we react acid with base then it form a salt and water and this reaction is known as the neutralization reaction so the second statement is true statement now let's see the third statement calamine solution is applied on the skin when an ant bite 
we know that calamine calamine is ZnCO3 zinc carbonate and this zinc carbonate is basic in nature because we know that the zinc carbonate is made up by the zinc hydroxide and H2CO3 carbonic acid carbonic acid is a weak acid and zinc hydroxide is a strong base so because of strong base and weak acid the medium of the salt is basic so the calamine solution is applied on the skin when an ant bites because ant bites have uh, acid which is formic acid or we can say that uh, methanoic acid so against the acid calamine solution is worked here so the option third is true statement so false true and true so the option d is the right option for this question now let's see the next question the next question is match column first with column second and select the correct answer using the quotes given below in this column there are three types of the indicators first is phenolphthalein second is turmeric and third is chloride and in the column second there are the different types of the indicators first is olfactory indicator second is synthetic indicator and third is natural indicator now let's see the answer phenolphthalein we know that phenolphthalein is a synthetic indicator so the phenolphthalein is matched with the second option turmeric we know that the turmeric is a natural indicator because we obtain the turmeric from the nature so the q is matched with the third option next third is clove oil clove oil is a is an olfactory indicator so r match with the first option so p match with second option q match with third option and r match with first option so 2 3 1 so the option a is the right option for this question now let's see the next question the next question is salts formed by a strong acid and a strong base are called neutral salts neutral salts are produced neutral solutions when dissolved in water example sodium chloride salt of hcl and naoh salts formed by neutralization of a strong acid and a weak base give acidic solution example ammonium chloride salt of hcl and ammonium hydroxide salts formed by neutralization of a strong base and a weak acid give basic solution example sodium acetate salt of naoh and acetic acid okay now let's see the question in which of the following is a neutral solution okay so which of the solution is neutral in nature now let's see the option first first is the common salt solution we know that the common salt is NaCl and this NaCl is produced by the combination of HCl plus NaOH means when strong acid hydrochloric acid react with sodium hydroxide then it gives NaCl plus water so the acid and base both are strong in nature so it produces a neutral salt okay so the option a is right option now let's see the second ammonium chloride solution ammonium chloride means NH4Cl okay ammonium chloride is obtained by the combination of ammonium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid is a strong acid and ammonium hydroxide is a weak base so the medium of this solution is acidic so it is a wrong option now sodium acetate solution we know that the sodium acetate sodium acetate is formed by the strong base and weak acid so its nature is basic so this is also a wrong option now let's see the sodium hydroxide solution sodium hydroxide means NaOH and we know that the NaOH is a base so its medium is also basic so C B and D all are the wrong option option A is the right option for this question hello student welcome to matrix high school today we discuss about matrix olympiad paper solution for class 7th now start first question for this portion 
which of the following part is modified into pitcher in pitcher plant pitcher plant that are the modification of leaf so right answer is leaf leaf is the part that help in to collect or uh, pick the insect so pitcher plant depend on insect insectivorous plant so many insectivorous plant like bladder wort uh, pitcher that help in collect or trap the insect so these are the pitcher plant and insectivorous plant so leaf see leaf part is the modified into pitcher next next question is bird are adapted to fly because bird bird have streamlined body yes light bone pneumatic bones hollow bones that are for uh, light bone for fly easily next feathers and wings right so all these things are right so or right answer for this question option d next question what is the function of mucus secreted by the inner lining of the by the inner lining of stomach so first option is kill many bacteria that are the function of hcl makes medium in stomach acidic that is for hcl hcl work for that protect lining of stomach that is right right protect lining of stomach from hcl because ph level of 1 1.2 so mucus help in protect the lining of stomach so right answer is option c next one which of the following is an adaptation developed by the desert plant to reduce loss of water first they shade leaf in summer no they have leaves modify into spines right like in cactus next they have fleshy leaves right in aloe vera so both b and c is a right option d is the right answer for this question next one is which of the following statements are true and false option uh, statement first algae contain chlorophyll which impart green color to them right leaves contain chlorophyll which is essential for photosynthesis that is right insectivorous plant are both heterotrophic and autotrophic that is right so true 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 statement true 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 statement option b is the right answer for this question next one is match the column first and second first coscata 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 is a parasite coscata is a parasite mushroom mushroom is the saprotrop and saprophyte earthworm is the detritivores participate in dts or dfc you need a uh, detritus food chain so 3 1 and 2 3 1 2 3 1 in option c option c is the right answer for this question next one is diagrammatic question human digestive system consists of gastrointestinal tract plus the accessory organ digestion involve the breakdown of food into smaller component until they can be absorbed and assimilated into the body right look at the picture below and answer the given question what is the structure c and d c and d c green color structure c and d d d portion that is a large intestine so over right answer for this uh, c and d gall bladder large intestine liver pancreas stomach heart no 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 right answer is option a that is gall bladder 
and D is large intestine. So right option is option A. These are the all solution for biology portion. Thank you. Hello everyone. Continuing the solutions of matrix Olympiad paper for class 7th. Here I am to discuss part 4th that is of mathematics. Let's start the first question of this part that is question number 21st. The following figure shows a number line the value of x minus y is. So here we are given with a number line and we have to find out the value of x minus y. So let's calculate it. Here first place the point x will be positive 4. Here we have minus 4 minus 8 then minus 12 and then minus 16. So we have a difference of 4 in each point. So here let's find out the value of x. The value of x is 4 and the value of y is equal to negative 16. So here let's place the value 4 minus minus 16 so it will be 4 plus 16 that is equal to 20. So according to question our answer is option D that is 20. So option D is the correct answer. Now the next question is question number 22. Choose the incorrect statement. Now here first we have to solve all the options then we have to check which option is incorrect. So let's solve the first statement. Here it is. Absolute value of minus 12 minus minus 13. So here first part is minus 12 minus minus is plus 13. So first option is correct. 1 is greater than negative 1. So here first option is correct. Let's solve the next option. Second option is also correct. 72 is equal to 72. Now let's solve the third option. Third option is also correct. Negative 120 is smaller than 120. And the last option we have. In the last option we have positive 120 is equal to negative 120 which is an incorrect statement. So we can say that option D is the correct answer. Now the next question is question number 23. In this question we have to find out which of the following is not correct. Let's solve and find out the incorrect option. In option A we have 0 0.175 divided by 0 0.7 minus 0 0.45. First we are going to divide. 0 0.175 divided by 0 0.7 we have 0 0.25 minus 0 0.45 upon 5.95 minus 8.25 plus 2.40 here we have to first add and then we have to do the subtraction part so here it is 8.35 here we have 8.35 minus 8.25 so after subtraction, we get negative 0 0.2 upon 0 0.1 and this gives us negative 2. So here we can check option A. After simplification, we get positive 2 but here after the solution, we get negative 2. So here first option is incorrect. So option A is the correct answer here. 
Now let's start the next question. Question number 24. Which of the following sets of fraction is in the correct ascending order? Here we have to arrange the set of fraction in the ascending order and we know that ascending order is the arrangement of numbers from the lowest number to the highest number. So here let's solve. We have a number 2 upon 3, 3 upon 4, 7 upon 10 and 4 upon 5. Let's take the LCM first. LCM of 3, 4, 10 and 5 is 60. Now let's convert this unlike fraction into the like fraction. So after converting it into the like fraction, we get 40 upon 60, 45 upon 60, 42 upon 60, 48 upon 60. Now it is easy to arrange them from the smallest to greatest one. Now let's start. The correct one is 2 upon 3. 7 upon 10, 3 upon 4 and the last one is 4 by 5. So here let's check the options. Here we have A and B in which 2 upon 3 is the smallest one. Next one is 7 upon 10. So here in the B option we have 7 upon 10. Then the next is 3 upon 4 and the greatest one is 4 upon 5. So here option B is the correct answer. Now the next one is question number 25. Simplify 2 multiply by 13, 3 upon 4 multiply by 5, 1 upon 4 plus 5, 1 upon 4 multiply by 5, 1 upon 4 plus 13, 3 upon 4 multiply by 13, 3 upon 4. So here this is a long simplification which will consume our time. So what we will going to do, we will first check which number is repeating here. So we can see that here 5 1 upon 4 and 5 1 upon 4 is in the repetition form and the next one is 13 3 by 4 multiply by 13 3 by 4 and here it is 2 multiply by 13 3 upon 4 multiply by 5 1 upon 4. So here we can use the property that is a square plus b square plus 2ab. That is equal to a plus b whole square. So here a square is 5, 1 upon 4. So in place of a, we can write it down 5, 1 upon 4 plus b is 13, 3 upon 4. So here 13, 3 upon 4 square. Question is in the form of a square plus b square plus 2ab. You can see that here it is 2. This is a and this is b. So we can also solve it by a plus b whole square. So here let's solve it. 21 upon 4 plus 5 upon 4. That is equal to. Seventy six upon four when simplified gives us nineteen square and nineteen square is equal to three hundred sixty one. So now let's check the option here. Three hundred sixty one is in the option C. So option C is the correct answer. The next question is question number twenty six. The integer which is its own additive inverse. So here zero is that integer which is its own additive in words. So here option A is the correct answer. Now the next question is question number 27. The given number line shows four fractions P, Q, R, S. If P, Q is equal to Q, R is equal to R, S, 
then find the value of q and r respectively so here we have to find out the value of q and r this is very simple question so here let's check the fraction of point p it is 1 upon 12 for q we will have 2 upon 12 for r we have 3 upon 12 and for s we can say that it is 4 upon 12 after reduction after reducing we get 1 upon 3 so q and r is 2 upon 12 and 3 upon 12 after simplifying we get 1 upon 6 and here the value of r is 1 upon 4 so q is 1 upon 6 and r is 1 upon 4 let's check the option here first is asked q so here option c is the correct answer that is 1 upon 6 and 1 upon 4 now the next question is question number 28 the mean of 25 observations was found to be 78.4 but later on it was found that 96 was misread as 69 the corrected mean is now we have to find out the correct mean now we know that the formula for mean is mean is equal to sum of all observations upon total number of observations so here observations are 25 and mean is 78.4 let's find out the sum of 25 observation first by putting the value the formula we get so the sum of 25 observation is 1960 but later on it was found that 96 was misread as 69. So here what we have to do the sum of 25 observation is 1960. Now we are going to subtract 69 from it because it was misread as 69 but the actual number is 96. After subtraction of 69 from 1960 we will going to add 96 in the sum so here we get 1987 the sum of 25 observation and this sum is the corrected one now let's find out the mean of this corrected observations So the mean is 79.48 and this is the corrected mean. So here option C is the correct answer. Now the next is question number 29. Study the following data. Here data is given to us and here it is written that if the mean of number of a student is 4 then the value of p is we have to find out the value of p now here mean is given to us and we know the formula mean is equal to sum of all observations upon total number of observation so here let's put the values here we have the mean of number of students so number of student is p plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 so here P plus 4, 3 plus 2 plus 1 upon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Total number of observations are 5. Main is 4. That is given to us. And here P plus 10 upon 5. 
4 multiply by 5 is equal to p plus 10. So it is 20 equal to p plus 10. So value of p is 20 minus 10 that is equal to 10. So the value of p is 10. Here option D is the correct answer. Now the next question is question number 30. Which of the following is the mean of first 5 natural numbers? So we have to calculate the mean of first 5 natural numbers. So here we know that the formula for mean is sum of all observations upon total number of observations. The first 5 natural numbers. So here the mean of first 5 natural number is 3 that is option B. So here B is the correct answer. Now the next question is question number 31 and in this question we have to solve the value for X. Let's solve. First of all we are going to take the LCM and here the LCM for 362 is 6. So here the value of x is negative 4 upon 5. Here option A is the correct answer. Now the next question is 32. A, B, C, D and E are 5 consecutive odd numbers. If the sum of A and C is 146 then find the value of E. So let's write down all the consecutive numbers. So here 5 consecutive odd numbers are 5. A is x, b is equal to x plus 2, c is x plus 4, c. So here these are the 5 consecutive odd numbers. Now we are having sum of A and C is 146. So here A plus C is equal to 146. The value of A is x plus value of C is x plus 4 that is equal to 146. So here 2x plus 4 is equal to 146. 2x is equal to 146 minus 4. So here x is equal to 142 upon 2. After reducing we get 71. So the value of x is 71. Now we have to find out the value of e. So here E is X plus 8. So we are going to place the value of X in X plus 8. So X is 71 plus 8. 71 plus 8 is 79. So the value of E is 79. Here option C is the correct answer. The next question is question number 33. Shifting one term from one side of an equation to the another side with a change of sign is known as. So this shifting is known as transposition. Here option C is the correct answer. Now the next question is question number 34. The difference between two numbers is 1365. When the larger number is divided by the smaller one. 
Here the larger number is divided by smaller one. The quotient is 6 and the remainder is 15. The smaller number is. So here we have to find out the value of the smaller number. So let the smaller number be x. If a smaller number is x, then the larger number is is equal to 1365 plus x. As the difference between these two numbers is 1365. So, we have added 1365 in the smaller number to get the difference 1365 in these two numbers. Now what we have to do the next statement is when the larger number is divided by the smaller one. When this number is divided by the smaller one then quotient and remainder is given to us that is given. Now we are going to apply the formula that is Dividend is equal to divisor multiplied by quotient plus remainder. So here dividend is the larger number because larger number is divided by the smaller one. Now we are going to place the values. Dividend is 1365 plus x is equal to divisor is x multiply by quotient is 6 plus remainder is 15. So here we get So the value of x is 1350 upon 5 that is 270. So here the value of x is 270. So the smaller number is 270 and here option B is the correct answer. Here in the next question, question number 35. In the given figure, P A is parallel to B C parallel to D T. Here P A is parallel to B C parallel to D T and A B parallel to D C. Here it is A B parallel to D C. Then the values of A and B are. Now what we have to find out, we have to find out the value of A and B. So here value of A will be when PA is parallel to BC. Here PA is parallel to BC, AB is a transversal line. So we can say that angle PAB, PAB is equal to angle a b c because these two angles are alternate interior angle so the value of so here angle a is equal to 50 now the next one is b here dt and bc are parallel lines so, DC is a transversal. So, according to the parallel line concept, we can say that angle T, D, C, DT is parallel to angle T, D C is equal to angle D C B. 
because these two angles are alternate interior angles. So this angle is also angle B. Now the next parallel line is AB parallel to DC. AB parallel to DC. For this BC is a transversal line and here angle ABC plus angle BC D is equal to 180 degree because they are making co-interior angles. So using co-interior angle concept we can say that angle B is equal to 180 minus 50 that is equal to 130 degree. So the value of angle A is 50 degree and the value of B is 130 degree. According to the option, option B is the correct answer. Now the next question is question number 36. In the given figure, if X O Y is a straight line, then the difference between the measures of angle P O X and angle Q O Y is. Now here we have to find out the value of these two angles first and then we have to find out the difference between these two angles. Now let's find the value of x first as x o y is a straight line. So here 2x minus 15 plus 110 plus x plus 28 is equal to 180. It is written here x o y is a straight line and a straight line angle is 180 degree. So from this we can get the value of x. Now the value of x is 19. We are going to place the value of x in the angles and then we are going to find out the angle. Here let's place the value in P O X first. 2 multiplied by 19 minus 15. This is 23 degree. Now the value of angle QOY is 19 plus 28 that is equal to 47. Now subtracting 47 and 23 we get 24. So here the difference between the measures of Angle P O X and angle Q O Y is 24 degrees. So here option D is the correct answer. Now let's start the next question. Next question is question number 37. In this question we have to find out an angle which is 5 degree more than its supplement is. So here we have to find out an angle which is 5 degree more than its supplement. So here we know that the sum of two angles is known as supplementary angles as their sum is 180 degree. Let the first angle be x and second angle is equal to 180 minus x. Now according to question an angle which is 5 more than its supplement this is an angle which is 5 more than its supplement. So here the equation will be x equal to 180 minus x plus 5. 
So here, let's find out the value of x by solving the equation. So the value of x is 92.5 degrees. So here option D is the correct answer. Now the next question. Next question is question number 38. An exterior angle of a triangle measures 135 degree and its interior opposite angles are in the ratio 1 ratio 4 than the triangle is. Now here we have to find out the name of the triangle. Here we are given with an exterior angle and exterior angle is 135 degree. Let's name the triangle ABC. Its interior opposite angles are in the ratio 1 ratio 4. So let's take interior opposite angle. This is 1x and this is 4x because we don't know the angles. So here what we have to do, we are going to use the property of exterior angle. So exterior angle property is exterior angle is equal to sum of interior opposite angles of that triangle. So here interior angle are in the ratio 1 ratio 4 and exterior angle is 135 degree. So let's add 1x plus 4x. Here we have 135 equal to 5x. So here in the value of x is. So here the value of x is 27. So we get the value of x. Now we can place the value of x in the angle A. So here 1 multiplied by 27 is 27. Here 4 multiplied by 27 is equal to 108 degree. So here angle A is an acute angle but angle B is an obtuse angle. So this triangle is obtuse angle triangle. So here option C is the correct answer. Now the next question is question number 39. In a triangle ABC if angle B is equal to 60 degree and angle C is equal to 30 degree then which of the following is true? Now we have to find out out of these four options which option is the correct one. Now here we have a triangle. This is name as ABC. Here angle B is 60 degree, angle C is 30 degree, angle A is unknown to us. So using angle sum property, we can find out angle A. So here angle A plus angle B is plus angle C is equal to 180 degree. Angle A plus 60 degree plus 30 degree is equal to 180 degree. Angle A plus 90 equal to 180 degree. Angle A is equal to 180 degree minus 90 degree. So we get angle A equal to 90 degree. It means the triangle is a right angle triangle which is right angled at A. So here, let's make a clear diagram. This is a right angle triangle, which is right angled at A. Now here, 
from A, B and this is C. 60 degree, this is 30 degree. So, according to this, let us check the option, which option is the correct according to the right angle triangle. So, here we can see that BC is your hypotenuse, AC is perpendicular or you can say that base, AB you can say perpendicular or base, anything. Now, here AC square is equal to AB square plus BC square. Here AC square and this is in the positive form. So, this formula is not applicable because according to the Pythagoras theorem, hypotenuse square is equal to base square plus perpendicular square. So, here hypotenuse is BC square base you can take AC square plus perpendicular you can take AB square. So, this is the correct representation according to Pythagoras theorem. So, here let us check the option because all the options are in the positive in the right hand side. So, we have to check in which option this equation is placed. So, here in option C, we can see that BC square is equal to AB square plus AC square. So, according to the option, we can say that option C is the correct answer. Now, the next question is question number 40. In this question, it is given that in a given figure RS parallel to QP. Here it is RS and here it is QP. Find the value of angle B. Here we have to find out the value of angle B. So, here triangle is given to us 2A plus 3A plus 4A. That is equal to 180 degree according to the angles and property of a triangle. So, let us find out the value of A first. 3A plus 2A plus 4A that is equal to 180 degree. So, here we get 9A equal to 180 degree. A is equal to 20. So, here angle P is 2 multiplied by 20 that is 40. This is 60 degree and this is 80 degree. So, we get the angles P, Q and R in the triangle P, Q, 1. Now, we have to find out the value of B here. So, here we, we can see that QP and RS are parallel line. So, here QR is a transversal. So, according to the parallel line concept, we can say that 3A is equal to B because of corresponding angle. So, 3A is equal to B. Angle 3A is 60 degree. So, angle B will also be 60 degree according to the corresponding angles. So, here option B is the correct answer. Now, the next question is question number 41. Which of the following statement is a true or false? We have to find out which statement is true and which statement is false out of these three statements. So, let us start the first statement. First statement is the sum of two negative integers is a negative integer. Let us take an example negative 2 plus negative 3. So, the answer is negative 2, negative 3 that is negative 5. Let us take one another example negative 3 plus negative 5. That is negative 3, negative 5, that is equal to negative 8. So, here the first statement is true because the sum of two negative integers is a negative integer. Now, the next is the quotient of two negative integers is a positive integer. Let us check. Let us take negative 24 negative 6. So, negative negative will become positive and this becomes 
पॉजिटिव फोर इफ यू टेक अनदर एग्जाम्पल नेगेटिव फोर नेगेटिव टू नेगेटिव कैंसल पॉजिटिव सो स्टेटमेंट टू इज ऑल्सो ट्रू बिकॉज द क्वेश्चन ऑफ टू नेगेटिव इंटीजर्स इज पॉजिटिव नाउ द थर्ड स्टेटमेंट द डिफरेंस ऑफ टू नेगेटिव इंटीजर्स इज ऑलवेज अ नेगेटिव इंटीजर so let's find out the difference here we will take the same example minus 2 minus minus 3 that is equal to minus 2 minus minus will become positive 3 that is equal to 1 let's take one another example minus 3 minus minus 2 so here Minus three plus two, that is negative one. So the difference of two integers is not always a negative integer. It depends upon the number. So it may or may not be negative. So a statement three is false because it is not always. So here sequence is true, true, and false. So true, true, false is in the B option. So option B is the correct answer. Now let's start the next question, question number forty-two. Now here in this question, we have to find out which statement is true and which statement is false out of these three statements. Let's find out. First statement is if the same non-zero number is added to both the numerator and denominator of a fraction, then the value of the fraction increases. It means that if we add same number in numerator and denominator. in the fraction the value of that fraction increases after the addition of the number so here let's take an example 1 upon 2 in 1 upon 2 we are going to add the same number on both the sides on numerator and denominator and then the number becomes 3 upon 4 so the value of 1 upon 2 was 0.50 and after the addition of 2 on both numerator and denominator we get 3 upon 4 the new fraction let's see the decimal form of 3 upon 4 that is 0.75 now it is easily visible that the value of 1 upon 2 before addition was 0.50 and after the addition of non zero number it is increased and the value of new fraction is 3 upon 4 and that is 0.75 so this statement is true now the second statement is if the same non zero number is subtracted now the same number is subtracted from both the numerator and denominator then the value of the fraction decreases now we have to focus on the decreasing part now let's take the same number 3 upon 4 and let's subtract negative 2 from both the numerator and denominator we get 1 upon 2 previously it was 0.75 and after the subtraction we get the value 0.0.50 so the value of fraction decreases yes this is true now the third statement is if the numerator of a fraction is decreased keeping the denominator constant now the numerator is continuously decreasing keeping the denominator constant then the value of fraction decreases let's take a fraction 4 upon 4 another fraction 3 upon 4 keeping denominator constant we are continuously decreasing numerator So let's read the statement again. If the numerator of a fraction is decreasing, so we are decreasing the numerator. Here it is four, three, two, one, keeping the denominator constant. Now our denominator is constant, four, 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 and four. Then the value of fraction decreases. So the value of fraction is decreasing. Let's check. This is a whole one. Three upon four is zero point seven five. Next is one upon two. So 
here it is 0 0.5 and then we have 0 0.25 so we can see that it is continuously decreasing so a statement third is also true so here according to the question we can say all the statements are true let's check the option here option b is the correct answer now the next question is question number 43 in this question we have to find out which statement is true and which statement is false so here we have to read the statement and tell which statement is true and false so here the first statement is any three parallel line segments can make up a triangle so this statement is false as parallel lines never intersect each other next statement is the vertices of a triangle are three non-collinear points. So, this statement is true because vertices of a triangle are non-collinear points. Next statement is statement 3. The sum of the measures of three angles of a triangle is greater than 180 degree. This statement is false because sum of measure of three angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degree. So, here the sequence is false, true, false and according to option, we can say that option D is the correct answer. Now, let us start the next question, question number 44. Match column 1 with column 2 and select the correct answer. We have to do the match here. So, let us start the first the predecessor of minus 56 is. So, here predecessor means negative 1. Let us minus 1 in this and we get negative 57. So, here the answer is minus 57. Now, let us calculate and find out the answer. Negative 1 multiplied by negative 2 is positive 2. Here it is positive 12 and positive 30. So, here the answer is 44. So, we get the answer 44 here. Now, the last is 12 times 6 is negative 72 minus minus plus and here we get 48. So, after subtraction, we get negative 24. So, here the sequence is 3, 2, 1. So, the correct answer is 3, 2, 1. That is option C. Now, the next question is 45. Again, this is a match the column. Now, here let us find out the value of x. Here, x is equal to 9 minus 5. That is 4. So, here option. So, here it is. 4. Now, x is equal to 4 plus 7, that is 11. x is equal to 30 divided by 5, that is 6. So, the correct sequence is 3, 1, 2. So, here 3, 1, 2 is in the B option. So, here option B is the correct answer. Now, the next question is question number 46. In this also, we have to find out the value of x. Now, here in column 1, we are given with the triangles and here we have an unknown value of x. So, here we will use the exterior angle property and find out the value of x. So, here x is 50 plus 70. So, here it is 120. 45 plus 65 is 110. So, here the value of x is 110. Here the value of x is 90, 60 plus 30. So, the correct sequence is 3, 2, 1. Here 3, 2, 1 is in the C option. So, here option C is the correct answer. Now, the next question is question number 47 and this is based on the information that is given in the graph. So, here study the following information carefully and answer the given questions. The following bar graph shows the 
number of rotten oranges in seven box containing 100 oranges each. It means we are having seven boxes of oranges and in each box we have 100 oranges. It means total number of oranges we have 700. So here in question number 47, let's see what we have to find out. What fraction of the total number of oranges are rotten? So we have to find out the fraction of total number of oranges are rotten. So let's find out the number of rotten oranges. In the first box we have 7. In the second box we have 5 rotten oranges. In the fourth we have 9. Then in the fifth box we have 3, in the seventh box we have 1. Let's calculate 7 plus 5 plus 9 plus 3 plus 1. That is equal to 25. So there are 25 oranges which are rotten. So let's write down the fraction 25 upon 700. So here, after reducing it, we get 1 upon 28. So the correct option is option A. So here, 1 upon 28 is the correct answer. Now let's find out question number 48. How many boxes have more rotten oranges than the mean number of rotten oranges per box? So let's find out the mean. That is total number of rotten oranges we have 25. And the total number of boxes we have 7. So mean is equal to 25 upon 7. Let's convert it into the mixed fraction that is 3, 4 upon 7. Now let's check how many number of boxes are there which has more rotten oranges than 3, 4 upon 7. Let's check. In the first box, we have 7. So, in box 1, we have more rotten oranges than mean number. In the second box, we have 5 oranges which are rotten. So, here it is also more than 3, 4 upon 7. And in the fourth box, it is 9. So, it is also more value than mean. In fifth box, it is 3, it is below mean value and uh, in box 7 also, it is less than mean number. So, we are having 3 boxes, box 1, box 2 and box 3 in which the number of rotten oranges are more than the mean number of rotten oranges. So, here... Option B is the correct answer. And based on this diagram, we have to answer the question number 49. How many pairs of obtuse vertically opposite angles are there? Here, we have to find out how many pairs are there which are obtuse vertically opposite angle. It means that the angle should be vertically opposite and more than 90 degree. So, let's find out how many pairs are there. First, we have angle EOD is equal to COF. Angle EOD is equal to angle COF. Next, we have angle EOB is equal to angle AOF. It means we are having two pairs of obtuse vertically opposite angles. So here option A is the correct answer. Now the last question of this part. How many pairs of equal supplementary angles are there? Equal supplementary angles means sum of two angles should be 180 degree. So here Let's find out the number of pairs. First pair we have angle AOD plus angle AOC is equal to 180 degree. It means this. 
नेक्स्ट वी हैव एंगल ए ओ डी प्लस एंगल डी ओ बी इक्वल टू वन हंड्रेड एटी डिग्री नेक्स्ट वी हैव एंगल डी ओ बी प्लस एंगल बी ओ सी हेयर एंगल बी ओ सी इज इक्वल टू वन हंड्रेड एटी डिग्री एंड देन वी हैव बी ओ सी एंगल प्लस एंगल सी ओ ए equal to 180 degree so from this we can conclude that there are four pairs of equal supplementary angles so here option b is the correct answer i hope you all understood thank you so hello student welcome to matrix youtube channel we are here to discuss the solution of matrix olympiad paper of class 7th reasoning conducted on 29 october 2023 in sip first hope you performed very well so let's get started so question number 51 and 52 find the next term so series is 5 8 24 57 109 184 288 423 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, and find the next number of the series so first find the pattern of the series so pattern of the series first find the difference between uh, two consecutive term so difference between 8 uh, 8 and 5 is 3 now next difference is 16 now next difference is 33 now next difference is 52 now next difference is 75 now next difference is 80 184 and 288 so difference between 184 to 88 is 104 now next difference is now next difference is 135 and find the next difference so this this difference is not in proper order then let's find the difference again so find the difference between 3 and 16 so difference between 3 and 16 is 13 now 13 find the difference between uh, 16 and 33 so is 17 now next difference is 19 again next difference is 23 now next difference is 29 now next difference is 31 this is the prime number sequence 13 after 13 next prime number is 17 after 17 next prime number is 19 after 19 next prime number is 23 after 23 next prime number is 29 after 29 next prime number is 31 after 31 next prime number is 37 so 37 it means uh this difference is 135 plus 37 it means 172 so missing term is 423 plus 172 it means 595 is the next term of this series so 595 it means option b is the correct answer of this question so let's move on to the next question so next question is 52 so 52 find the next term of the given alphabet series so alphabet series is n m q r n q y d n u g p n y o b and find the next missing term of the given alphabet series so first taking first alphabet of each term so first alphabet of each term is n n n n and so first alphabet of missing term is also n now taking second alphabet of each term m q u 
Y and find the missing alphabet. So M means 13, Q means 17, U means 21, Y means 25. So position of M is 13. Position of Q in English alphabet is 17. Position of U in English alphabet is 21. So uh, pattern is 7, 13 plus 17 means plus 4. 17 plus 4 it means 21. Now 21 plus 4 it means 25. Similarly 25 plus 4 it means 29. As you know last alphabet of English alphabet is Z. Position of Z is 26. Now 27. It means you can restart the alphabet. 27 it means A. 28 it means B. 29 it means C. 30 it means D. And so on. So uh, 29 it means 29 it means it means C. So second alphabet of missing term is C. So first is N, N, N and second is C. Uh, so, it means option C is the correct answer. Let us check. Taking, taking third alphabet of each term. So, third alphabet of each term is Q, Y, G, O and find the next missing alphabet. Q means 17, Y means 25. G means after 26 position of G is 33. Position of O after 26 is 41. So pattern is plus 8. Now 25 plus 8 it means 33. Similarly 33 plus 8 it means 41. Now 41 plus 8 it means 49. So 49 it means after 26. Position of W is 49. So third alphabet of the missing term is W. Now taking four alphabet. Now taking fourth alphabet. So fourth alphabet is R, D, P, B and find the missing alphabet. R means 18, D means 4, P means so 18 minus 14 it means 4. Now uh, D, D means D also known as 30. So, 30 minus 14, it means 16. So, 16, it means P. So, 16 minus 14, it means B. 2, it means 2. 2 means B. B also known as 28. Now, 28 minus 14, it means 14. So, 14, it means N. 14, it means N. So, fourth alphabet of the missing term is also N. So, here, uh, option C is the correct answer of this question. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. So, next question is question number 53. Select the correct mirror image of the given combination of letter and numbers. So, find the mirror image of the given question. 2 is, to, uh, two is near the mirror. So, it will remains near the mirror, in the mirror image. So, first find the mirror image of 2. So, mirror image of 2 look lies as follows. Now, find the and then find the mirror image of 9. So, mirror image of 9 look lies as follows. Now, find the mirror image of 6. So, mirror image of 6 look lies as follows. Now, find the mirror image of R. So, mirror image of R look lies as follows and now find the mirror image of A. So mirror image of A look lies as follows. Now find the mirror image of E. So mirror image of E look lies as follows. So here Option D is the correct answer of this question. So, option D is the correct answer of this question. So, let's move on to the next question. So, next question is question number 54. In a row of 54 people. So, total people is equals to 
54 a is 15 place from the left side so this is the left side of the row and this is the right side of the row this is the left side of the row and this is the right side of the row so a is 15 place from the left so position of a, a is 15 from the left side and position of b is 20 from the right side position of b from a is 20 from the right side so find the total number of people between a and b find the total number of people between a and b so here find the number of mid people if if total is greater than to left plus right position then so formula of number of mid mid person is total minus left plus right and second condition if if total is less than left plus right yeah other you can say left plus right position is greater than to total then number of mid um, then number of mid people is equals to left plus right position of the other person minus total minus 2 so here total is 54 total is 54 and left position plus right position of the other person is 15 plus 20 it means 35 so to here total is greater than to left plus right position so number of mid person so number of mid people is equals to is equals to total minus left position of the first person plus right position of the second person so total is equals to 54 minus left position of the first person so left position of a is 15 plus right position of uh, second person so right position of b is 20 so 54 54 minus 15 plus 20 it means 35 so 54 minus 35 it means 19 so there are 19 people between a and b so here option a is the correct answer of this question so let's move on to the next question so next question is question number 55 which of the following interchange of sign would make the given equation correct so equation is 64 minus 8 multiplied by 9 divided by 8 is equals to 64 we have four options for this question. So in this question, options are taken one by one and see which one will follow correctly. So first taking option A. So according to option A, interchange the plus and minus. So equation is 64. Minus means plus 8 multiplied by 9 divided by 8 is equals to 64. So using board mass rule in this equation, so 64 plus 8 multiplied by 9 divided by 8, divide the numbers, so 9 divided by 8 is equals to 64, 8 when they are 8, so 64 plus 9 is equals to 64, so 64 plus 9 it means 73, note equals to 64, it means option A is the incorrect option, now taking option B. So, according to option B, interchange the divide and multiply. So, equation is 64 minus 8 multiply by, multiply means divide, 9 divide means multiply, 8 is equals to 64. So, 64 minus divide the number first, 8 divided by 9 into 8 is equals to 64. Now 64 minus 8 multiplied by 8 it means 64 upon 9 is equals to 64. So here 64 minus 64 divided by 9 it means 7.11111 is equals to 64. Now 64 minus 7.1111 it means 56 minus 88888 note equals to 64 so here option b also incorrect option now taking option c 
सो अकॉर्डिंग टू ऑप्शन सी इंटरचेंज दी प्लस एंड डिवाइड इंटरचेंज दी प्लस एंड डिवाइड सो इक्वेशन इज सिक्सटी फोर माइनस एट मल्टीप्लाई बाई नाइन डिवाइड सो डिवाइड मीन्स प्लस एट इज इक्वल टू सिक्सटी फोर सो यूजिंग गोडमास रूल सो मल्टीप्लाई दी नंबर्स सो सिक्सटी फोर माइनस एट मल्टीप्लाई बाई नाइन इट मीन्स सेवेंटी टू प्लस एट इज इक्वल टू सिक्सटी फोर सो सिक्सटी फोर प्लस सिक्सटी फोर प्लस एट इट मीन्स सेवेंटी टू माइनस सेवेंटी टू इज इक्वल टू सिक्सटी फोर सेवेंटी टू माइनस सेवेंटी टू इट मीन्स जीरो जीरो नेवर इक्वल टू सिक्सटी फोर इट मीन्स ऑप्शन सी ऑल्सो इन करेक्ट ऑप्शन नाउ टेकिंग ऑप्शन डी सो अकॉर्डिंग टू ऑप्शन डी इंटरचेंज द माइनस एंड डिवाइड so equation is 64 minus means minus means divide 8 multiply by 9 divide means minus 8 is equals to 64 64 divided by 8 it means 8 multiply by 9 minus 8 is equals to 64 8 multiply by 9 it means 72 now 72 minus 8 Is equals to sixty four. Seventy two minus eight. It means sixty four. Sixty four always equals to sixty four. So here option D is the correct answer of this question. So option D is the correct value, correct answer of this question. So let's move on to the next question. So next question is question number fifty six. Select the correct combination of the mathematical sign that can sequentially replace the abstract sign. and balance the given equation so equation is 5 abstract 7 abstract 36 abstract 18 abstract 2 abstract 8 okay choose the uh, correct combination so first taking option a so according to option a 5 first abstract means multiply 7 second abstract means plus 36 third abstract means minus 18 fourth abstract means divide 2 and fifth abstract means equals to 8 so using bodmas rule in this question in this equation so 5 multiply by 7 plus 36 minus 18 divided by 2 it means 9 is equals to 8 so and and then multiply the numbers so 5 multiply by 7 it means 35 plus 36 minus 9 is equals to 8. So uh, 35 plus 36 uh, it means 71. 71 minus 9. 71 minus 9 it means 62. Never equals to 8. It means option A is the incorrect option. Now taking option B. So according to option B, uh, 65 first abstract means multiply. Seven second abstract means plus thirty six third abstract means minus minus eighteen fourth abstract means plus plus two and fifth abstract means equals to eight. So using Bodmas rule, so uh, multiply the numbers. So five multiply by seven it means thirty five plus thirty six minus. Minus eighteen plus two minus eighteen plus two it means minus sixteen is equals to eight. So thirty five plus sixty thirty six minus sixteen it means twenty is equals to eight. Thirty five plus twenty it means fifty five never equals to eight. So it means option B also incorrect option. Now taking option C. So according to option C, according to option C. Five first abstract means multiply seven. Third uh, second abstract means minus thirty six plus eighteen. And fourth abstract means divide divide two is equals to eight. According to option C, so equation is five multiply by seven minus thirty six plus eighteen divided by two is equals to eight. So Using Bodmas rule, five multiply by seven minus thirty six plus eighteen divided by two. It means nine is equals to eight. So five multiply by seven. It means thirty five minus thirty six plus nine is equals to eight. 
ऑप्शन सी इज द करेक्ट आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर 57 सो क्वेश्चन नंबर 57 चूज ए फिगर व्हिच वुड मोस्ट क्लोजली रिसेंबल द अनफोल्डेड फ्रॉम ऑफ फिगर z सो फाइंड द फिगर ऑफ अनफोल्डेड पेपर सो इट मींस फाइंड द फिगर ऑफ x बिकॉज़ x रिप्रेजेंट्स अनफोल्डेड पेपर सो इन दिस क्वेश्चन दिस एरो शोस Folding the folding direction of the paper. So first we folded we folded x. Then we go y. Now we folded y. Then we go z. Now unfold the paper. So unfold the paper in the same sequence in which it was folded and find the mirror image in each case. So first unfold the z. So unfold the z. it's represent y so unfold the z when unfold the z is it's look like as follows and it's represent y now unfold the y now unfold the y it's represent x it's represent x so unfold the y it's look like as follows and it's represent x and x is the uh, figure of unfolded paper so here option d is the correct answer because option d shows the correct uh, unfolded paper of paper z so right answer is option d so let's move on to the next question so question number 58 paper is folded cut as shown below how will it appear when unfolded so find the figure of unfolded paper so find the figure of x because x represents unfolded paper this arrow shows folding direction of the paper so first of all we folded x v folded x then we go y now v folded y then we go z now unfold the paper so unfold the paper in the same sequence in which it was folded and find the mirror image in each case so first unfold the z so unfold the z it's represent y so unfold the z so find the mirror image of this figure so mirror image of this figure look lies as follows now unfold the unfold the z it's represent y now unfold the y it's represent x now unfold the y it's represent x so unfold the y it's look lies as follows so it's represent also it's represent x so x represents unfolded paper so here option option b is the correct answer because option b shows the correct unfolded paper of the figure z so right answer is option b so let's move on to the next question so next question is question number 59 rakesh starts walking from his house and then takes two left turn and one right turn to reach the market if he is facing north on reaching the market in which direction was rakesh facing when he started from his house so let's suppose this is the house of rakesh before starting this question 
we should know that there are four type of direction one is east second one is west third is north and fourth is south and there are four cardinal direction one is north is second one is south is third is southwest and four is northwest okay according to a question so rahul rakesh started walking from his house and then takes two left turn and one right turn to reach the market. So, starting direction. So, let's suppose uh, Rakesh's start, starting direction is in east direction. And then take two left turn. So, he takes two left turn, one left turn and two left turn. And one right turn. And he take one right turn to reach the market. To reach the market. So if he is facing north. Yes, he is, fa he is facing in the north direction. According to this, he is facing towards north direction. So in which direction was Rakesh facing when he started from his house? So Rakesh starting facing towards the east direction so here correct answer is option c so starting direction towards the east so correct answer is option c let's move on to the next question so next question is question number 60 if southeast is called east northwest is called west southwest is called south then in the same way north will be called as so before starting this question you should know that there are four types of direction one is east west north and this is south and there are four cardinal direction one is northeast this one is southeast southwest and this one northwest so according to question According to question, if southeast is called east, where is southeast? Southeast is called east. So this is the east direction. And northwest, where is northwest? Here is northwest. Northwest is called west. Northwest is called west now southwest where is southwest 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 is called south so this is the south and opposite of south is north opposite of south is north now in the same way north where is north here is north so north will be called as so according to question north will be called as Northwest. Northwest. So here option C is the correct answer of this question. Okay, thank you everyone.